I got a comment on one of my videos. In this case, it was using the show hide commands in advanced actions. Uh, and it was from Mark Jones who wrote, I have a slide with two image buttons. One button takes the learner to their training simulation. When their training is completed, they are returned to the slide with the two buttons again, where they can click on an image button, which takes them to their assessment. However, I don't want the assess yourself button to be active until I have confirmation that the learner has completed their training simulation. So normally I wouldn't answer Mark with a full detailed explanation on how to do this within the comments of uh, one of my videos. What I would usually do is recommend that they purchase, um, you know, one of the ways that I can help you out uh, from my website at CaptivateTeacher.com. You can see there's a few options available. I could email an answer to your question. But also, I have this uh, neat new feature called YouTube Video Answer, which you can purchase. And I'll record a video that I'll share with the entire community, but it will address your specific question. And I've decided to give Mark a complimentary YouTube Video Answer today. Uh, here's a basic example of what Mark was describing. He has a main menu. There's a button for the training simulation. There's an assess yourself button. And there's some sort of training simulation that occurs after that slide. We also have a return to menu button, which will take you back to that first slide. And then afterwards is a quiz, an assessment of the learner's ability to retain the knowledge or skill that was taught during the simulation. So let's start off with slide number one. Now, first of all, we have, uh, of course, an assess yourself button that we don't want to be visible when the user first arrives on this slide. So what we can do is we can click on the visible in output icon next to the label for this particular object. Just note that I've called this object assess yourself button. So we'll make that not visible in output. And the action for this, uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and assign the action for this, is that they're going to jump to the slide where the quiz starts. So I'm going to say jump to slide. And in this case, it's slide number three. Now, the first button we want to make av available right away. So we're, we're not going to hide that, but we're going to assign the action to jump to slide two. Now, the reason I'm choosing jump to slide two and not go to next slide is I may be adding additional slides. I might be moving this slide to another location, and we want to maintain that it's always going to jump to that particular slide. So if I move slide two, this will automatically get updated. If I simply have go to next slide, it will always be go to whatever that next slide is. But we want to maintain this relationship here. Now, we're going to go to our slide two now and do a few things as well. We've got this return to menu button, and this is a case where we really need to do two things. We want to show that quiz button, but we also want to go to that first slide. So how do we do that so that, you know, two things happen when I can only select one on success action? Well, that's when you need an advanced action. An advanced action in this case is two or more actions. Uh, it can also be conditional actions as well, but I'm not going to cover that in this video. So we're going to execute advanced action. We don't have any created so far. So we're going to go ahead and click on the advanced action icon. We need to give the advanced action a name. In this case, we'll say return to menu, but you can call it whatever you wish. And we're going to show, we're going to use the show command. And in this case, we're going to show the assess yourself button. And we're going to go to, uh, and well, sorry, in this case, we're going to jump to slide number one. Again, we want to maintain that uh, relationship even if we move these slides around. So I'm going to save this as an action. I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to click Close. And just double check that the script is pointing at the correct advanced action. I only have the one, so it's the only one available. So uh, in summary here, I think we're pretty much good to go. So training simulation will jump to slide two, will complete what, whatever work needs to be done here, and then we'll click on the return to menu, which will 
show our assess yourself button, but also uh, navigate back to this slide here. The other thing I'd recommend that you do is under your project menu, go to the skin editor and turn off the playback controls at the bottom of your slide. The reason you would do that, of course, is that uh, the playback controls will give your learners the ability to skip past uh, the main menu and go straight to the quiz if they wish using these controls here. So anytime you create your own navigation, you probably want to turn this off, which is what I'm going to do in this case here. I'm going to close this down and I think we're good to test this out. So let's just preview this project in HTML5 and see how it works. So as you can see, we've arrived at our main menu slide. The training simulation uh, navigation element is here, uh, but the quiz button is not there yet. So let's go ahead and do our training simulation. Okay, we've learned what we needed to learn. Let's return to the main menu. Oh, now I have the assess yourself button. I could return to the training simulation if I thought I need additional review. But I can now go ahead to my assessment and hopefully successfully complete the assessment. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com, follow me on Twitter at CaptivateTeacher, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.